Ready? Today I would like, I think for the first time, knowingly, to go back to a passage that we, uh, we've already had in one of these daily videos. You may be learning that I'm a rather forgetful person, so it's very possible that we uh, have already revisited a passage and or that I have already said that for the first time we are revisiting a passage. Regardless, we're going back to the book of Mark. And I know that we have done this before because I keenly remember sitting in my apartment in New Jersey, which seems like a lifetime ago uh, with the way this year has unfolded. I'm sure Annie was sitting on one side of the bed and I was squeezed between the other side of the bed and the wall uh, or the window and Jack and Oliver were, were probably with Amelia in the other half of the apartment. I remember talking about Mark, how I took a class on the Gospel of Mark in seminary and it has stuck with me since then how our professor one day for our devotion said, you know what, we're not in Mark 10 yet, but let's talk about Mark 10 and went to this verse about the Son of Man coming not to be served but to serve and how that has been challenging and edifying in, in his own life as not just a professor and a pastor, but as a parent and as a spouse. And um, I want to go back to that today. It's one that I mentioned in the sermon on Sunday. It's one we were we kind of finished our elder meeting with last night. It's been on my mind a lot, and I think it's a good one for us to be pondering. Uh, Mark 10, 43 through 45, Jesus says this. Uh, or actually, let's go to verse 42. Mark 10, 42 through 45, Jesus says this. And Jesus called them to him and said, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them, but it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be a slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. I know this year still seems overwhelming, it does to me, but in some ways I think we have adapted to it. We, we have gotten used to certain things, what we have to do if we want to go grocery shopping and so on and so forth. Um, and so I think this is a good time for us to revisit this idea that we are not put on this earth in order to be served, but to serve. And to realize, okay, if we have our feet under us in this situation, it may be time to start asking once again, how can I serve others? Uh, so much of what's out there, I don't know what news site you read, the, the few that I browse through seem to be telling me all the time to think about what I need and I wish and I'm missing and I want and I can't wait for. And, uh, you know, it's not that those things are totally unimportant. But um, it is important that Jesus has taught us to be the servant of all and to not jump into the day looking to be served, but to serve. I was listening to a sermon this morning and the pastor was pointing out how odd it is that when we are feeling down, one of the things we can do that will has the most potential to encourage us is to go and encourage somebody else. Uh, it's interesting. We would like people to be taking care of our needs right now, many of which don't feel met. But perhaps one of the most fruitful things we could do is to figure out how we can serve somebody else. Who else's needs we could meet? Mm, it's a question I'm sure we've asked at various points along the year. Hopefully you asked whenever we were sitting here at the same computer talking about it before. But it's one we should ask again. Uh, how do I turn my attention from the ways in which I'm wishing I were being served uh, to the question, who can I serve in the name and by the power and for the glory of Christ?